You take a look at the dollar yen, it's really been the biggest currency story in the last uh, several weeks, last several months. Uh, you take a look at that sort of one-way uptrend yep. that we have since, 70, uh, since the 77 level in September of last year. Uh, we've had uh, very few major pullbacks. It's been yep. sort of a straight uh, up very rarely go in a straight line Absolutely, long. absolutely. So, you know, my target was 90. Uh, we're well above that right now. Uh, my target above that was 92. Uh, eventually, within this year, I'm looking at 95 and 100. Okay. That's how strong it's looking. The volatility in between? Volatility, there will be uh, pullbacks, there will be retracements and corrections, but uh, uh, for the time being what I'm looking at is uh, a continuation of the upshot in dollar-yen. Cable's taking a bit of a battering this morning. Cable's definitely taking a, a bit of a batter. Uh, we, we take a look at uh, the uh, pound-dollar chart. Uh, you see that uh, there's been a big break to the downside. Uh, we saw a price action fall below 160, below 158. Uh, we're uh, sort of around that area right now, and uh, I'm looking for 156 to the downside, further weakening on the British pound uh, down to possibly 150-250 uh, support. Timeline on that? Uh, I'm looking in the next several months. Uh, it's looking very bearish. Okay. And is that reflected also in, in euro sterling as well? Is this, the, is this across the pairs? Y uh, yes. I mean, if you take a look at the euro, uh, I'm sort of bullish on the euro because uh, we are seeing uh, a very strong bullish trend. We're seeing a strong uh, bearish trend on the uh, pound dollar. All you need to look at is euro pound to see the upshot of the uptrend in the euro pound to see that manifested. Okay. I, it's interesting. We're going to talk to a, uh, a sort of more fundamental analyst a little bit later on. He thinks that, that uh, the euro is going to be the, kind of the rock star of 2013, that it's going to be where all, the, where all the action is to the upside. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing from a fundamental point of view is, is, a, is a totally different discussion. But just give us some trigger points. Where, where, how is the market positioned? Where do you think the stops are going to come through? Where is the volatility? What levels do I need to look at? Sort of, yeah. How do I set this trade up? Well, I would tend to agree uh, with, uh, in terms of the bullishness on the euro dollar. Uh, we broke below, uh, above many, many different levels. Uh, I was uh, targeting 135 yep. for quite some time. Uh, we're just under that right now. We, we formed what's called a bullish pennant pattern. Yep. Uh, we just broke up above that. I'm looking above 135. Uh, I'm looking to 137, uh, sort of intermediate term, and then up to 140. How would you set that up? Would you be, I, what, what is the best trade to, to take around there? If I'm, if I'm putting some option positions in, where should I be putting them? Okay, well, what I would be looking for is a break above 135. Right. And then I'm looking for corrections. I'm looking to play the pullbacks. So one touch up there. Yes, and one touch up there and then a pullback uh, and then uh, possibly uh, a breakout to the upside above that pullback. That's the trade I'm looking for. Okay. Um, Aussie dollar, always an interesting trade, clearly correlated with what's happening in Japan to a certain extent. Absolutely. We, we've had a look at this sort of, th th this 106 level. Market's not convinced it can get through it. Not convinced at all. Uh, we take a look, uh, we've been in a range bound uh, area on Aussie dollar between 106 and 10150. Uh, lately, 103.50. I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, it's tried to breach 106 on several occasions in the last several months. Like four or five uh, times. Yeah, four, or? it looks like four or five times exactly. So if we are able to break above 106, then uh, then we could see some uh, some bullish uh, momentum to the upside, uh, possibly towards the 108.50 area. There's not much area. positioning above that. Exactly, exactly. So uh, we are looking for, uh, but it has to be a break. I mean, we've tried many times. Aussie has tried many times to break above that. Hasn't worked. Uh, if it does, 108.50 is what I'm looking for in the short term. If you were to pick any of these pairs, which one would it be? If you were, if you were to put all of your eggs in one basket, I'm just kind of at the level of conviction on, on yes. each of these four, which would it be? I would definitely put all my eggs in the dollar-yen basket right. at this point uh, because we are seeing such a strong bullish trend and uh, I'm looking for that to continue. Is, is dollar-yen the right way to play the yen story? I, is euro-yen, is... is, is, is Yen won the right. What is the best pair? I know that's where the flow is, and yep. I know that's where the liquidity is. But is that the best pair? I think it is. I think the dollar yen is, uh, as opposed to the euro yen, we've seen uh, you know amazing, uh, an amazing bullish trend on this, and I'm looking for it to continue. Uh, you know, you could play the pullbacks, and you could play these uh, big moves to the upside that we've been seeing in the last several months.